Hello everyone, my name is Gabby and welcome back to another Dragon Ball Super Review. This time reviewing episode 49. Bulma slaps some sense into Trunks, and he suddenly realizes which Goku he was trying to attack. He explained to them everything that happened in his timeline after they after he left. After he defeated Dabur and Babidi, a new threat who appeared who called himself Son Goku, and he arrived to annihilate the humans, and Trunks has been no match for him. While the time machine is out of fuel, inside, Bulma finds a notebook written to her by her future self. With that, they can get it running again, and Goku and Vegeta volunteer to go to Trunks' timeline to fight this Goku Black. But before they can get going, the sky goes dark and Black appears in front of them. This time, it looks like the fight has come to them. So, what do they like about this episode? Well, first of all, Future Trunks interacting with all of the rest of the cast members now. I mean, yeah, now Future Trunks is awake and he's sort of looking around and seeing all the cast and getting filled in on everything that kind of happened ever since he left to his timeline, which was the thing, yeah, I really wanted to see. I really wanted to see how he'd react to the stuff on like the stuff that's happening in Dragon Ball Super and I mean they kind of did that because they had Beerus and Whis there. I thought that their inclusion seemed a bit a bit forced when I saw them last episode but here I think it was worth it because we get to see Trunks see the god of destruction and his attendant and react in a very typical kind of future Trunks way in the sort of like you know he kind of just respects everyone and he's really polite to everyone so he's just sort of like oh no no please you know don't pun don't punish my mother or don't do anything like they didn't do anything wrong please you know, you know I'm begging you blah 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 I don't know like it was it was really good and it's sort of like it kind of did make me think like yeah I do I did almost kind of miss Peter Trunks. Or at least characters like Peter Trunks. I mean honestly like Gohan has the same kind of personality, although sometimes even a bit more extreme. But I mean we haven't seen him for like however many episodes. So it's just really interesting seeing Future Trunks interact with everyone. And now that he's been filled in and like things like Kid Trunks has also been filled in with Future Trunks' existence and the stuff from the future and time travel and all that. So I thought it was just, it was a lot of really good interactions and I enjoyed it. I feel like they utilized Future Trunks being there to its fullest extent in this episode. And then there was that one thing. It was a very short kind of almost cutaway scene, but it was actually kind of interesting. Having Future Trunks explain that in his timeline, eventually um, Babidi and Dabara did show up to try and revive Majin Buu, but then he had some instructions from Kaioshin and he just beat him. He, he beat Dabara and he beat Babidi, so Majin Buu wasn't revived in his timeline and he saved them and then that was like no threat at all. Like that, that's a thing that literally people have been talking about and theorizing for for years. Hey, I think there was like an entire video game where the story portion was just trying to like come up with a scenario as to what was going to happen. So the fact that yeah this and episode 39 so far the two like really big significant points in Dragon Ball Super where they've given a full-on explanation for something that has been plaguing the fandom for years and years and years because it never got an actual answer to it. So again this is one of those things where you're like okay Dragon Ball Super you gave me this I, I buy this I think this is worth it. As for what I didn't like about this episode, okay, this isn't really a proper, proper, proper complaint, but this arc has gotten so fanficy. I mean, I've said this before, but it's especially true in this time because obviously, like the ideas of Future Trunks coming back and Evil Goku are kind of they do sort of sound like fan fiction, but especially in this episode where it's like Trunks apparently has learned Super Saiyan two, this feels so much like a fan fiction. You know, Trunks coming back from his time and he's like, "Oh, hi guys! You know, did you miss me? In the meantime, I've learned Super Saiyan two off screen. I'm so much stronger now." I know this happened in the series itself. But even in the series itself, when characters just kind of show up half like show up randomly and then get a new form, like for me I'm always just like, uh, oh, do I buy this? This is a bit ridiculous, I don't know. Like for Trunks it makes sense, honestly. For Trunks it I, I buy that because I mean like Kid Trunks doesn't have Super Saiyan 2 yet, but Gohan had Super Saiyan 2 when he's like the almost the exact same genetics as Trunks, and Trunks knew what was possible because of that, and Trunks has probably been training because he had to beat black and he's also like the only Saiyan left alive in his timeline. So it makes sense, but it still sounds like something that a 12 year old boy would write. I mean it's not necessarily going to lead to anything, but I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. And then there was the one line, throwaway line thing with Chi Chi, where Chi Chi stops Goten from going and investigating the time machine because she says that Goten needs to study, and that is more important than the potential fate of the world. I want to know who decided to write that and almost kind of slap them in the face because please, Toei, please stop. Just stop now. Stop now. Stop it. Not only is this that stuff with like Chi Chi, like literally saying that studies are more important than the fate of the world 
not funny and not interesting and make people hate Chi Chi. It's also inconsistent with her character. Because by, by Goku's death, by the Bruce Saga, she's, she actually willingly trained Goten. So, you know, having her say that, oh, Goten, now Goten suddenly needs to study and he can't go and save the world or get trained or anything. Like, please, no. Toei, please, please, don't keep this going because I don't want this to, I don't want you to keep this going, okay? It, it, it's terrible. Just don't. Please, just for me, just stop. As for next episode, Goku was going to fight Goku Black. Or... Son Goku or whatever. I mean, you, you could call him whatever he wants, but like everyone in the show, in the show itself, even though even if Goku Black doesn't call himself that, everyone in the show is calling him Goku Black. So I think that's what we're supposed to call him as well. But of course, yeah. The really interesting thing about this is like you know this is a big showdown, which you'd expect it would kind of happen at like the end of the arc, some kind of big climax or whatever. But it's only happening like the third episode in. So, you know, it makes you think that this fight is not going to end with one of the characters dead. It feels like it's going to lead into something. My question is just sort of who was going to win that battle? How is the other person going to survive? And what is that going to do to lead on to the next stuff that's happening? Because yeah, I'm really curious. We don't know what's happening and really you could theorize and it could be anything. So, you know, I I'm just really interested to see how this fight is going to go underway. So that was Dragon Ball Super episode 49. Once again, interesting episode. Nice character interactions, nice little interactions in general, really interesting stuff moving the story forward. I feel like the pace, even if it's a little slow, I think the pace so far has been going pretty well. We've had a pretty sufficiently good build up up to Goku Black and this is his first interaction with almost all the main cast all together. So I think, I think so far this arc has still got a pretty good start. After three episodes, they haven't dropped the ball on anything yet. So. Maybe it's a bit too early to start hoping, but at the very least, this arc seems to have, they have, seem to have a better, a clearer idea of what they're actually doing. That's one thing. And it's definitely interesting because we don't know what's happening next. And I think that's half of part of the reason why it's appealing so much. There's no movie retellings, and this isn't a tournament where we know exactly what's going to happen until the end of the tournament. This is a weird adventure arc, adventure arc, fighting arc, it could go anywhere any way, in any direction, and we don't know. And that's what's interesting. So this is Gabby, signing out, and I'll see you all next week. Bye guys!